Hi guys, it's the Dental Assistant Tutor again, and today I'm going to go over the composite tray. Now with the composite tray, you have your anesthetic, you have your topical, ready to go, maybe a little bit on a 2x2 two two gauze, set aside, your Vaseline for the corner of the lips, set aside, um, your handpiece hooked up with the 557 or 330 burr in there, your slow attachment hooked up with a round burr in there if that's what your doctor likes. Okay, find out what your dentist likes to use. Tell them you understand that each doctor works differently. Um, then you'll have your basic setup. Your mouth mirror. Make sure there's no scratches on it. It's clean looking. Your explorer. Your cotton pliers. A clean pair of cotton pliers for you to reach and grab into drawers. Remember that. And then that's basically your instruments other than a composite placement instrument. And some dentists might use the styled one where it's gold and silver. Okay, it doesn't matter if it has um, a condenser on one end and it's flat on one end. That's a composite instrument. They might use the old school when it first came out, made out of Teflon. Okay, it could be two flat ends or one end. And these tend to show old cement and composite so make sure you scrub that off with the burr brush which should be located in the sterilization area then you have your plain silver one that's small okay it looks kind of like a cord packer for crown and bridge but the cord packer has little grooves for the teeth for pushing the cord down so composite instrument and then this fancy one with the rubber tips okay and gold so those are your composite placement instruments. You would only need one on the tray. So your basic setup, a spoon excavator to scoop out the decay, extra cotton pliers, and your composite placement instrument. That's all you really need. And your handpiece and anesthetic syringe. The rest is basically materials. And that all depends on the office. And you can locate the composite tub in one of the cabinets in the operatories, each operatory should probably have a composite tub in it. If you have just one for your office and you take it to room to room, uh, keep up with it, keep it stocked, okay? Whenever there's downtime, you stock up your supplies in your trays. There's always something to do during downtime. Okay, so with that being said, you know, they'll numb the patient, they'll look at the tooth, you'll have your x-rays up on the monitor or by the, pa the doctor's gloves that you have out for them. Because um, they're rushing, going room to room. You fill them in what filling you're doing. You've checked that health history. Don't forget to check that health history before the anesthetic even goes into the mouth. Or even the topical. Because they could be allergic to red dye number four. Okay. So, you have your basic setup. The composite placement instrument. And the extra cotton pliers. Then you have your hemoseal. Or some type of cleaner. To clean inside the inside of the tooth where the cavity was once all the decay is removed um, you would also have your well let's jump then you would use etch okay so you use hemoseal you would use etch and then you would use bond okay now let's talk about etch remember the tips come off after every patient there are so many different tips out here that fits the etch that it doesn't really matter as long as you check it before you hand it to the dentist and you hand it to them this way and always bleed it. Find something to bleed it on. If you had a two by two gauze or something, just take a little bit and make sure it comes out like this one's stuck. And so if I, he was to keep pushing or she was to keep pushing, it could shoot out into the mouth. So make sure that it bleeds. Okay. If not, get a new tip. Keep a couple extra tips out in case one's malfunction. Somewhere where it won't get um, dirty, okay, or contaminated. So once you've done the etch for 30 seconds to a minute, you know, just say, you ready for me to rinse? You know, after 30 seconds, they'll say no a little longer. And then you would take your suction tip like this and hold it right on top where the etch is. Suck up as much as the etch that you possibly can off the tooth before rinsing. Otherwise, you can push the etch off into the throat and it tastes like real bad lemons, okay? And it could turn their tissue white up to 72 hours. 
and they're gonna be looking at you why you didn't suction properly okay and worst comes to worst spray some water in her mouth if you can't find the etch and have them closed down and then all that suction will go in there and you'll be able to see if you have the clear ones so after you etch you're going to bond okay now there are some packets out there that are very expensive if the dentist uses them that's awesome they're like a little foil with little bubbles there's two bubbles you pop the first one you fold it you crease it and then you take the micro brush and you're just mixing it up inside of the foil if you don't have that kind you will get a damping dish or a composite well, which is normally black with an orange shield on it that slides. That is your composite well. This stuff is very expensive. It's like $80 a bottle, and you just open it up. Always make sure you put the lid right back on and secure it. They're watching you, trust me, okay? Sometimes the drop will just come out more, and they'll be like, that's too much. I know that, but it just came out too fast. So just, but you don't say that. You just say, okay. And then you just put a little drop in, they need very little and then you're going to hand it to them either with a brush or a micro brush okay and you're going to bend it for them already so they can get up to the upper or lower always bend it for them you can even dip some in there and then hand it to them like this and hold this like this okay so they grab it from you and they have more if they need it then they're going to use the air so they're going to spread a little bit of air just to spread that adhesive onto the tooth. Then they will light cure it with the curing light, okay? Or you will be holding the curing light. So remember to hold it, look through the shield, never look at the blue light, even though it's pretty. Um, over time, just like with radiation, over time it will ruin your eyes. So don't look through the light. Okay, and if your patient can see the light, let them know. And it's always nice to give your patient safety glasses for any of the procedures. Keep that in mind. So after we've done that, well, we light cure it, so the adhesives bond it. Now all we have to do is put the composite material inside the tooth. Now, if it's a large filling, they might start off with some flowable to get down into the cavity and start to fill it. Or they might just use condensable composite, which comes in a syringe like this, but it's wider. And, and instead of squeezing it, the composite you twist and it comes out when you take the lid off. There's no tips. You just take it and you put it on a mixing pad. Um, and then when you're done using it, twist it backwards. Otherwise, it's just going to keep expanding. You'll see all your lids will be uh, messy. So they will use flowable composite or condensable composite or this composite that's in the little composite gun okay with the tips that you just insert just like this just like that all right and there's one more a new one called sonic fill and when they use sonic fill it's a little tip that gets inserted um, into a, it looks like a hand piece, it looks just like a hand piece, but it has these, and you just push it in there, and then when they use the rheostat, it automatically pushes the flowable composite out, and then they use it for light curing. So then, once again, like you do with amalgam, you would check the patient's bite with articulant paper. Tap, 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 tap grind around how's it feel you know do you feel like this side's coming together ask these questions you know um, it's good to dry the tooth off with the air before the doctor places the articulant paper with the articulator holder if they don't have an articulator holder use the cotton pliers okay check the bite you might have to use a few pieces so have your um, articulant paper out and if everything feels well unlike um, amalgam you have to wait you don't have to wait. It's set up. It's hard. Okay? But they are numb. So once again, if they're numb on the lower, be careful not to bite your lip, cheek, or tongue. The filling's already set, so once the numbness goes away, you can go ahead and eat. But if they're on their way to work and they haven't had breakfast or lunch, have them have a shake. Okay? They can drink through a straw for these procedures um, when they're doing restorative work. 
So keep that in mind and let them know, especially if it's an anterior composite filling, that over time it might stain. Mine happen to have done that with tea and coffee. I'm a big coffee drinker. So and it can stain. So they'll have to have it replaced over time. And each time, just for your knowledge, each time a tooth has a filling removed, more natural tooth structure has to be ruined. Okay? Even after you clean out the recurrent decay and you clean it out, they have to get to some of the natural tooth structure, which is going to destroy it. So they really, they can still get a cavity in the tooth that had a filling. So they have to keep it clean. Um, if they're not a good flosser, that's where most cavities start, is in between the teeth. Let them know that. Um, and then, also, before you even do the procedure... Don't forget to ask them. If they're doing anterior composites, maybe all cervical ones, ask them, are you thinking about whitening your teeth? Because that would be a great time to upsell, to help with production, to help with your bonus check if your dentist gives you one, or for your dentist to see that you're trying to help his office or her practice. Um, so you upsell, you say, well, we can whiten your teeth prior to doing these fillings. And they'll say, well, that might sound great. Or they may not want to. So you need to check first because once they get the composite fillings, they cannot whiten those. So definitely check. Another thing is that you have to look for, especially with teenagers and young adults and maybe some grown-ups, you know, older ones, their periodontal uh, issues, their bleeding gums, and therefore they have all kinds of cavities. Well, you have to fix the foundation first by getting the teeth cleaning done and let them heal. Make sure they're doing proper techniques for brushing. And when they come back, check their gums before doing those anterior composites. Because if they bleed onto the composite, the filling will be pink. Okay, now they do have some new filling material called Beautifill. It's awesome. It's different shades for pigment of gum tissue. And I used to like what Dr. Kelso used to mix and match the pinks to make the right shade for that patient's tooth. Because sometimes you can keep adding composite to recession, then your tooth is going to look a lot longer than the other teeth. So therefore, they've made up this composite that will look like the gum tissue. And sometimes you might have to use the natural composite tooth color filling with the beautiful shade just to get it just right because dentistry is a form of art cosmetic dentistry helping people feel better about their smiles but it's not just about making them feel better it's just that they can eat and drink things without having sensitivity okay let me think of anything else I want to share with you remember that when you're charting a composite it's open and Always remember how many shades you use, okay? Sometimes you can use two or three different shades on one tooth if they're trying to be very particular. Or they'll just, the most common shade that dentists might use all across the board is A2 or C2. A2 or C2. If you're running out of stuff, grab those two. When you get to the Ds, it's getting a little darker. Most common shade for everybody is an A2, okay? Um, they do have bleach shades out there that you can order if you needed to for those special patients. And the shade is on all the composites. You have to look for it. Okay, including that one. Okay, so check the shade and write it down on the chart because you don't know if that filling is going to pop out if it was wet. And if it wasn't dry and isolated very well... They might be looking at the assistant for not keeping it nice and dry, and that's why the filling came out. So make sure you're doing your job with the saliva ejector during the composites and the cotton rolls. Make sure you're putting cotton rolls on the inside of the cheek, on the inside of the tongue to keep it isolated. Remember, um, a little trick is when the cotton rolls getting too saturated, you can always not take it out and get a new one. You can actually take the saliva ejector and push down onto the cotton row and it will suck up the moisture that it has uh, collected so far into the appointment. Um, if you can, just there's sometimes you just can't get in there and switch things out. So just take it and dry it out like that. If you take your ear syringe and push into the cotton row, 
the air will push it into the slide ejector or high volume. Remember, if you're using the high volume, to hold on to it with the air syringe tip. That way you don't suck up the cotton roll. All right. That is it for the composite procedure. Um, remember, when you're light carrying, you never want to leave the tooth on there too long because you can damage the pulp. Um, if you use a base, make sure you let them know that they could have sensitivity to hot and colds. And always make sure that their treatment is done before dismissing them. Or do you need to make another appointment for them to come back? Um, that's about it. Until next time, guys, take care. I hope this is helping you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my page, the Dental Index that we leave. Uh, dentalindexjr.weebly.com it's a page that has all the procedures on there to help you study and become the best dental assistant that you're meant to be bye